Okay, the next album. First, well, first let me say we're moving on from 2010. That album was released the day after Christmas. We got more Dodon Pachi coming up now, and I think this, but I think this, the name of this album is a misnomer because it's not all Dodon Pachi. It's not Pachi. all Dodon Pachi. Yeah, I really needed a different name. Uh, what's well, exciting? I mean, I can understand why they named it the, that the way they did, but I'll let you introduce it. Yeah, I think what's most exciting about it though is who it's by. The album is Dodon Pachi Dai Fukatsu Black Label Arrange Mode album, and. This is 12 tracks, about 30 minutes of music, from our good friend, Jake Vert Kaufman, the guy behind a lot of way forward compositions, a lot of amazing original albums that he's released over the years, and uh, some really great arrangements for the community in general. It turns out he's a, he's a fan of, of Don Maku Shooters. He actually has a great insert, liner notes, uh, written out in English and Japanese in the booklet. He even mentions, why did, why did Japanese eroge have such great <laughs> music? Which I think is a hilarious comment on his part. But it was awesome. Jake got to do a whole album for Cave. And yeah. what you're hearing right now is the boss track Darkened. Uh, which you're like, hey, Darkened isn't the boss track for Donan Pachi Dai Fukatsu. And I'm going to let Don explain that. Yes, yes. So, uh, so, before getting into that, just as a maybe an idea, is that all of the arrangements on this album were, I think, done in two weeks because of some miscommunication between, like, Cave and Jake. So, when Cave asked for an update, he was like, oh shit, I really have to start, because he thought he had more time or something like that. I'm not sure the whole story behind that, but I know that all of these arrangements were done in, like, two weeks. Wow. Everything all completed in two weeks so I imagine it was a very stressful time for Jake <laughs> but the reason that this is called the it's all Ketsui arrangements but it's feature it's called the black label arrange mode album is because there is a specific mode in this Xbox 360 release where you actually are like fighting the Ketsui bosses and if I'm not mistaken you also I'm not sure if you're the actual, like, ships from Ketsui or... or yeah, who you're piloting. Who you're piloting, but I know that in this mode, all of the bosses, including a super steroid version of the true last boss from Ketsui, is they're all, that's the reason why Ketsui is used instead of uh -huh. the game, because you're essentially fighting all of the Ketsui storyline bosses. Okay, so it's not necessarily a misnomer if you own the game the and game. know about the arrange mode. Yeah. But yes, this is music from Ketsui. But then but then they use the DDP stages, right? Yes, they use the stages. The, the, the DDP stages were just the actual the bosses that's, are different. Wow, that's very cool. Because it also has the same scoring mode as Ketsui. Like the one through five, killing them depending on how close you are to the enemy. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. I am terrible at that for the record. <laughs> I stay far away. The track that we're listening to now is my pick from Jake's Arrangements. This is the ending track, Last Words. It's, it's sufficiently short. I just really like when Jake takes on a track that has those held notes, those almost the whole measure, wail it out, because then he can just do some really cool stuff in the background of that. I think Jake is a master of rhythm. He puts together some extremely catchy beats. Don and I have seen him multiple times in concert at MAGFest, and he is just so awesome. So I just love the fact that a Japanese company reached out to Vert our buddy in California and made this album happen and got it into the game. You know, it's so cool. I, uh, I, re I remember Jake telling me about stage four because he had already arranged it for the Ketsui Arrange album. So right. he was like, what do you want me to do? Just reuse it? He's like, make it similar, but more vert style. So vert. that's what they said, more vert style. Yep. And it, cer it certainly works. It's very synthesized and very happy.
Speaking of very synthesized and very happy, we are now moving into the realm. One of the weirdest album releases, Moochie Moochie Pork and Pink Sweets both got remade with a W tacked on to the end. So Cave goes and releases a two-disc album, even though the combined time between the two discs is well under 75 minutes. I think it's like 63 minutes or something. So it could have been put on one disc, but they release a two-disc album. First disc is Moochie Moochie Pork W, which is all... And these aren't arrangements. These are new compositions for the game. So this is a composition by Wasi303. And then the Pink Sweets W soundtrack is done by Koji Hayama, who worked... I think we last heard him on the, the Pink Sweets Arrange album, tacked onto the OST. He's the Cho Anarchy guy, and he's one of my favorites. Now, Don, you chose a track off of Moochie Moochie Pork W. Tell me why yeah. you chose that. Um, I chose Stage 3. As we, I, I just like the, the atmosphere that this one gives. It's like this nice kind of electronic tune with a focus on that, that piano, and I just think it creates a really nice atmosphere it's really kind of hard to describe it still captures like the playfulness of the original but compared to the original with the in-house sound team i think this is definitely a much more refined tune even though it is quite simple in execution yeah and you know i think that last phrase describes the whole album for me i really like wasi 303 i know you do too i thought this was was not his best work this was not his best showing i mean that of the soundtrack as a whole I think that Stage 3 is one of the best tracks on this disc. We'll get to more Wasi 303 near the end of this that I think is really good. But I was a, I was a little let down by this one, I will say. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Overall, it is not his strongest suit. But I think part of it, with, in terms of the composition, has to do with like the graphical style of the game. It's more, yeah. cartoon, it's more cartoony. Yeah, he had, he had a theme... To fit and a scope to fit, and that's not easy. Um, and I think it's certainly what he's written here is certainly certainly fits the game. It looks awesome. You know, watching and hearing, it works. No question. On the other hand, I think Koji Hiyama, uh, who's been writing music for freakishly silly shmups uh, since the early 90s, <laughs> uh, is uh, well suited to do the soundtrack for Pink Sweets W. And I think the second disc, honestly, I think he knocks it out of the park. I love this disc. And I have also selected Stage 3, um, which is what we're hearing now. I think this is just a super fun song. Um, just super high energy, very sugary, uh, and it's great. Uh, let's just let's just step back to get a couple seconds of what this one sounds like in full. Uh, also simple, like uh, like Wasi 303's composition. You know, it's it's uh, it's nothing too crazy in terms of what it's doing musically, but it is frantic. It's very high energy, and I like that. Yeah. Unlike uh, Pat, I prefer the first disc. Overall, I, I I don't know. It's just me, but I think it's more inspired. Like it really fits the, the the game more than I think the the Pete's, the Pink Sweet soundtrack fits the game. I, I I don't know. I mean, I think just some of the stage themes here are really hit or miss on the second disc. Huh. Like like stage four, it I mean it feels a bit derivative to me at times. I don't know. Although it is, it develops nicely, but so I mean there are just some aspects that I think don't really fit the game but I mean both of them are enjoyable it's just I think that Moochie Moochie Pork does a better job at capturing that atmosphere yep and uh, 
the, the, the catalog number on this, uh, CVST0019, that was a pack-in soundtrack. Uh, and I'll just say on a personal level, that was a very hard one for me to get. Um, next up, uh, released in May of 2011, is the soundtrack for Nin 2 Jump. It's like Nin Square Jump. It's a, it's a superscript 2. And then at the end of the disc, it says slash Akai Katana FM Sound Collection. So it's all Ryo Omimoto. First up, we get his compositions for Nin 2 Jump. This is his last full soundtrack for a game in terms of time of publication. I think this game is older, though. Is that right, Don? This game is older than... Akai Katana. No, it's, it actually came okay. out afterwards. Okay, so this was, yeah, this was his last full OST, um, unless you consider the Shin Rain job as an OST. It's a rework of his old music, but it serves as an OST in a game. But, you know, we're getting sort of near the end here. It's May of 2011 and passed away in July. I think at this point, by the time the soundtrack was released, his health had already deteriorated to the point that we knew he wasn't doing well. I don't think anyone knew that he was going to die. We knew he was in serious, uh, in a serious condition, though. I really like the Nin 2 Jump soundtrack. In some ways, I like this disc more than the Akai Katana OST, because I love the FM arrangements, even though neither of us selected them. I love the FM arrangements for Akai Katana, and I think that these compositions for this game, and by the way, I know nothing about this game. Um, I think these compositions are really cool. And you selected uh, Winter, track 11. This is the songs cover seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. And uh, so winter is near the end. And it's uh, this is a good stage theme. Yeah, I mean, in terms of melody, it's maybe not as memorable as some of the other stage themes. But I really like how it, you can really hear that kind of wintry and icy vibe yes very especially using the synthesis how we manipulate the synthesizers yeah very crystalline and very bright Now I've chosen the menu track, which you're hearing now, and this is just a, a great song. It's got that pentatonic scale running up, so you get that that Asian flair. And uh, as far as menu or stage select tracks go, this one is really catchy. I just I could listen to this on loop for a long time. Now, uh, before we move to the next disc here, Don, do you know anything about what this game is? Ninto Jump. Um, I know it's like a kind of like a platformer type of game. Okay. I mean, it's all very tiny stages from what I imagine. But I think it's like shadow puppets. You're like a shadow puppet. So, I mean, I think that has some um, cultural aspects, too. Yeah. Now, was this an arcade game? A console game? Both? Uh, just Xbox 360 Xbox Live arcade release, I believe. Did it make it to America? Um, I think it did. To, um, let me, I, I'm pretty sure it did. I'd like um, to look into this. I mean, it seems to have a Metacritic page, so I assume it did. Wow. I'll, I kind of want to check this yeah, one out. Yeah, and, and apparently it's only $5. Wow. When it was released. And that was in 2011, so maybe it's even cheaper now. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's four, 400 Microsoft points, because I don't know why they don't just use dollars. Yeah, because they're silly. Um, in any case, uh, that's probably worth checking out. Uh, and the soundtrack is i think it's really good it may not be memorable but it's good now if you want memorable though what you're hearing starting now is memorable we're gonna just let it go for a while and then we'll talk about it Don, what is that beautiful singing guitar that I'm hearing? 
This is, I guess, the new arrangement of the original soundtrack's ending theme. And I guess this translates to glory. Komyo. And what is the album we're listening to? The album we're listening to is the Akai Katana Shin Arrange album. And in this album, he takes his bass compositions and also incorporates live guitar performances. Which is why it sounds much fuller overall. Yes. But, but sorry, go ahead. But I mean the reason I chose this song, to be honest, is that I think this is the song that whenever I think about Ryu Umemoto, this is the song that immediately comes to my mind. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it has this almost heavenly sort of like sound, but I think like this theme since he finally like got to compose for Kate which was one of his dreams I think this you know it's like it was a glory in his own right and I think it was just kind of cut too soon yeah it absolutely and so is. that's why whenever I think of this song I think this is his defining moment in his short lived career we're going to listen to the song a little more and meditate on that certainly you know his story and and what he went through and how he got to where he got is all you know really inspiring and i'll just put the plug in here now um our friend uh Auden sorley or audi um from norway got to spend a whole bunch of time with umemoto san umemoto actually came out to visit him in norway uh they had developed a really strong friendship and uh there is a lengthy uh tribute to umemoto san on Hardcore Gaming 101, um, written by uh, Audi, and we'll have the link to that uh, in the uh, below the video as well. So if you want to learn more about Omemoto, that's that's a a, a good resource. Um, we're gonna move to, I think this might be the only original composition on here. Um, so, as Don said, Omimoto self-arranged. He added the live guitar, which is by someone whose first name is Yudai. I can't remember his last name offhand. And he also, you know, updated the backing tracks and did some more awesome work just to make this really his crowning achievement. It's just an amazing album. But he did do an original composition as well. I mentioned earlier, they added a new Stage 5. So this is um, Scabbard Accent, and I don't have the the Romaji for that on hand, but it's the new Stage 5 theme, and this just has a ridiculously catchy, like, Mega Man-style third harmonics guitar lead part. Um, it's uh, in Romaji and Shitadome. Yeah, this is just a super catchy line. I was rocking out to this one in my car a couple days ago on the drive to work, and it's a good thing there weren't any cops on the road, I'll just say that. This one was just, I was fired up, man. This is a good one, so let's Let's take some time to listen to this one too. As a reminder, once again, Akai Katana Shin is, that's the only version of the game to have come to North America. You can get it on Xbox 360. Um, absolutely worthwhile. Great game. And you'll get to hear this version of the music, which is uh, the best, easily the best, 
and uh, also the rarest, because this was a pack-in soundtrack with the limited edition of the game. Personally cost me, after all was said and done, just under $100 to obtain this album, and I didn't get the import game with it, it was just the album. That's how crazy it's gotten trying to get a hold of this disc. So, yeah, if you aren't a collector of music per se, but you want to hear good music in a game, that's just one more reason to pick up Akai Katana Shin for 360. Now, before we go to what will be Kumimoto's first posthumous release, there are actually two albums released on the same day, uh, August 26, 2011, so this is uh, after Kumimoto-san passed away. The first album we're going to listen to is the second in our line of iPhone soundtracks. And this one's different from the other two because this isn't just a game with a new mode. Uh, this is a completely new game, and it's not even a shooter. It's not a shmup. The game is Mushihime-sama Bug Panic. And what we're hearing right now is Be By My Side Forever, Story 3, Ending Song Piano Version 2. That's <laughs> uh, track 15 on this disc. While we're listening, what you're seeing is the poster that came with the game. In it, you see Larsa, the villain from Mushihime-sama Futari. Uh, you're seeing bugs and uh, Reko and Palm and uh, beautiful but barren landscape. I love the art to this whole series. And I actually played this game straight through on iPhone. You can get it for... I don't know, like six or seven dollars on iOS. I'll talk more about the game's style, but I want to pull back right now so you can hear this main melody here. Now, I want to talk more later about this game and my experience with it, but before I do, Don, why don't you tell us about this song uh, and this album and the composers on it? All right, well, this song that, I'm, that I chose um, is by Mika Nozawa, um, which is a name that before this I wasn't really familiar with, and I'm still not that familiar with her, to be honest, because aside from this main melody and a few I, I didn't find her music to be all that memorable yeah but great. but i i really enjoy this actual piece and i and i kind of feel that this music is kind of wasted on a game like this because to me i think it would fit really well in like an rpg more so than like a weird i don't even know how i would describe what type of game this is yeah you know um if anyone's played Summon Knight Twin Age, or you've played um, any kind of room-to-room -room dungeon crawler or roguelike that doesn't follow a grid or is any way grid-based or turn-based, but but smooth-flowing action. Is it kind of like Smash TV in that sense? Yeah. Um, kind of, like that kind of style, kind but obviously of. that's more regimented, obviously. Yeah, right. This one is less regimented, though it, it does involve taking on enemies and waves, but there's also, like, neat little secrets, but basically you're Reko running around and throwing bombs at bugs. Okay. And I'm gonna disagree. I think this is a really good game. I spent hours with it and really came to like it and finding the, the secrets and beating levels without dying and, and getting the high scores. There's a lot of replay value in this game. There's 25 stages. It's five worlds, each with five stages, with a big boss fight at the end of each world. Okay. And it's, back, oh, it, sorry. it's got a lot of content to it. But the other composer, which is probably what you're hearing now, um, is uh, Michiro Yamane. So yeah, any, yeah. any fan of Castlevania will at least recognize the name. And this music, parts of the soundtrack, are definitely Castlevania-like, but there are a lot of parts, uh, lots of others that definitely don't speak, oh, this is Michiro Yamane, like this theme, for example. 
yeah this is the world map music it's called on the other side of the door and yeah this is a lot happier than uh, yeah. much of her castlevania music and of yeah. course yamane is sort of what we might consider a uh, new school castlevania the metroidvania style that's sort of her ground she got i think she got her big start with symphony of the night which I like anyone who listens to game music knows Symphony of the Night. So I mean, we don't mention the stage theme. We well, you're not hearing the stage themes, but the stage themes that she composes are pretty interesting. Like obviously the last world, that one definitely has a more Castlevania-like sound. But the very first world is kind of like upbeat and happy. And to be honest, I think it would fit perfectly in Super Mario Galaxy. I totally agree, and I can totally imagine it. So yeah, um, Mujihime Sama Bug Panic, a very uh, weird game, you know, not at all a shmup, but that's okay, it's still pretty cool. 